Hey guys, so as you can see, today we're gonna to be talking about the Polaroid 450. It's one of my favorite cameras to use, and it's also one of the best land cameras that Polaroid made. One, because it has Zeiss glass, three glass elements instead of plastic. The body is metal. It's got a tripod mount on the bottom. And then also it's got an integrated viewfinder where you see both the frame and the focus Whereas a lot of the other land cameras, you look through one to see the focus and look through the other to see your framing. So this way it integrates it, it's metal, it's just all around a better camera. So when these cameras originally came out, they sold for $169 from Polaroid. Nowadays you can find them at Goodwill pretty cheap. They're usually between $5 and $20. If they're more than $20, it's gotta be something special like the 450 or some of the other ones. But for the most part, you know, expect to pay like 20 bucks. They still only make one kind of film for it, the peel apart kind. It's the FP100C. It's a color 100 speed daylight balanced film. They used to make a 3000 speed black and white, which was awesome, but they discontinued that. I still have a stock of it, maybe at five or six that I put in the fridge when they first announced they were going to be discontinuing it so i think i've got like a few left but color you can find anywhere depending if it's on sale or not it's between ten dollars twelve or thirteen dollars and it's really kind of cool to shoot with it's fun you're only really paying about a dollar and a little bit per shot if you get it on sale it could be under a dollar a shot so it's really fun to play with cameras are cheap and it's got that unique instagram look that you don't have to use filters for it. It's already got it there. So in that land camera fold out series, the best ones were the 100, the 250, the 350, and the best, the 450 in that range. So I, I've had all of those. The 450 is still my favorite to shoot. It's just built like a tank and it's a great fun camera. The camera was manufactured from 1971 to 1974. After that, they stopped continuing them. And even now, Polaroid, the company went out of business. So the film is actually Fujifilm, but it works in all Polaroid land cameras. It's more cost effective to use the peel apart than it is the 600 series cameras because the Impossible Project is the only company that still makes those. And so for eight shots, you're looking at paying between 20, $25. So instead of being a dollar a shot, it's more like $3 a shot. And if you screw up, it's there goes $3. So I prefer the peel apart. The images are a little bit bigger. Um, you can take the negative, wash the backing off of it and scan it like a regular negative. And then you can reprint as many as you want or enlarge it or however you want to do. Let me show you how to load a Polaroid pack film into the 450 and take some shots. We'll probably just use some shots in my car get a few examples to see what it looks like and uh, hopefully inspire you guys to go out and just get one. It's pretty cheap and it's really fun to shoot with. So this is the 450. Comes in a pretty compact package for its day. And the way you undo it, this is just a cover to protect it. Back here, just lift on this. There's the 450. Inside here you have the instruction manual. And then underneath that, you have the cold clip which what you're supposed to do is like a metal, a two piece of metals that folded over each other. And if the temperature's under 65 degrees Celsius, you take it and you put it in your coat or under your armpit for at least five minutes. That way when the photo comes out, you go ahead and put the photo in there. So that way it'll warm and the chemicals will work better. So you can see it's the 450. This just pops up the viewfinder. Then right here, you push up on this arrow and then this just pops out Boop. and there you go ready to go so right now on the front here you have the adjustment for darker or lighter so by just twisting this it'll adjust if the image is going to be slightly darker slightly lighter however you like it down here underneath it's going to have your iso so right now it's set at 3000 but you can go ahead and set that to roll it over and it'll go to 150 or 75 so when you're shooting the color i just keep it at 75. that way it tends to kind of overexpose it a little bit so i usually leave this on normal 
and there you go. And then this right here just controls the top, which is if you're shooting indoors or outdoors with flash or without flash and the type of speed of film. Again, pretty self-explanatory, uh, but I mainly shoot outside with it, so it's usually always on outside. The number two here, this is your trigger button, and that's pretty much how you take the shot. The number three here, this is how you cock the shutter. So when you're ready to take the shot, you push that down like this, and then you come up here, you adjust your focus by these two by going left and right, that will adjust your focus. And then you push this and it takes the shot. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna load this camera. One of the things that's with the 450 that was a great feature was you have an electronic timer on the back. You look on the back of the film carton and it'll tell you depending on what the outside temperature is, how long it should sit before you peel it. And you just adjust that here. And at the end, this will light up. And at the very end, it'll do a beep. So that way you know if you can go ahead and peel it. Really cool feature to have. This is the battery compartment over here. And then this is the compartment to load it. Underneath, you have a lever that undoes this. And one of the things I do is I take this off. And this is just easy, just got a clip right here. You just push up and then this comes off and you can just use it like this. So now we got the clip off. Makes it easier to get down to here to do the film. So all you gotta do is push on this and this just swings open. This is the old carton. We're just taking this out, we don't need this. And then this is the back. What some people do, like I've done, is there's normally two springs here. And the, the new cartons, they're plastic. The old ones used to be metal. So they were a little bit thinner and the spring helped keep the, helped keep the film flush. With the plastic ones, they're a little bit thicker, so sometimes it makes it difficult to pull. And so like I've done, some people just break those springs out and uh, it works fine without it. These are your rollers. Every now and then you wanna check and make sure they're clean. You can just push on here and then they just swing out. But let's put in a piece of film and then see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the FP100C, open it up right here. Film comes out like this. Here's the film. Then it just tears in the back. Just tear it open. Pull this out carefully. So this is the part that goes out towards your lens. And this is how you install that. Okay, so here we have the film. Just tuck it in here. Make sure that all these tabs come up. And it just fits right there. And we want to make sure that all these tabs are out. This is what we're gonna pull, which is the dark slide that protects it right now from the light. You take this and you just push it and it goes in like that. Sometimes what'll happen is because of that spring and it creates a little bit of tension, this might be a little hard to pull. So what I sometimes do is just leave it just a little bit open and then just get this started. And then I put it all the way and then pull this the rest of the way. So now this tab, you can see right here, it'll say the number one. It'll say the number one. That means that that's your first picture and we're ready to start shooting. So we're gonna shoot a couple of these and what's gonna happen is when we're done, I'm gonna get a couple shots of my car and then we're gonna pull this out. It's gonna bring out another one, which I'll show you and then see what that looks like. Okay, so ahead of time, what I did is I checked the back of the box and based on the temperature outside today, I set this to 25. So it's about 25 right now. And that timer does not start until you pull the second tab. So what we're doing is right now, I took my first shot. I'm pulling this tab, I kind of wiggle it. I see that it's a little bit tough. So I'm gonna take, loosen this just a little, start pulling it, get this back down, pull it the rest of the way and then it pulls the second tab right here. So now this is the tab, once I pull this, the timer's gonna start. So now the timer started, and here's the tab. 
So now we just have to wait for it to beep. Usually where the number is, I just peel from that corner and we're good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and peel this. Okay, so as you can see, there's the car and this is the negative. The negative, we could go ahead and wash the back, like I said, and then scan it. And you could just, you know, blow it up as big as you want. So as you can see, the light is a little bit blue. That's because this film is daylight balanced. And so unless you put a warming filter on it, it's gonna be kind of have a little bit cooler tones in the shade. In bright sunlight, should all be fine. There's the negative that you can go ahead and wash the back off with bleach and then just use it as a regular transparent negative to scan and to enlarge it or do whatever you want with it. All right guys, so I'm gonna go around the area and shoot a few more shots, show you what those look like. Don't forget to subscribe to me on YouTube and I regularly post daily on Instagram, so follow me there as well. And hopefully this tutorial was a little bit helpful and you guys won't feel so intimidated about picking up an old school camera, shooting some of this film before it completely is gone. Since the color is the only thing that's left right now, black and white's already gone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.